it's one of the most self-loving things you can do is be with yourself no matter what. Be with yourself unconditionally. And what happens to my clients, because we practice this a lot, they get really good at it. It gives them so much confidence and they feel so resilient because they know I can literally handle any emotion that happens within me because of whatever happens in my life. And therefore, I'm not afraid of anything and therefore i'm free to literally go in the direction that best serves me and feels the best to me without my fear being like well what if i get disappointed or what if i get heartbroken or what if this or what if that they're just like well what if that's fine i'll process it i can handle anything like if i get disappointed i'll be disappointed and i'll move on with my life like so it really gives people this freedom that i feel like really can't be accessed any other way other than just like knowing how to feel it all. Welcome to Alignment Adventures. This is a podcast where we explore what it means to live a fulfilling, aligning, and present life. I'm your host, Lindsay Tanner, and I am so grateful that you are here. and welcome back to Alignment Adventures. As always, I'm so excited and so grateful that you are here. I'm your host, Lindsay Tanner. If you are new here, this space is all about discovering what it means to live your most aligned, fulfilling, and present life. And there's just so much to dive into there, so much to uncover. And I love bringing you guys interviews with people that are kind of leading the edge in this field. So today I have another interview with Kelsey Aida. And I know I say this all the time, so you guys are probably going to stop believing me. And that's okay if you do, but this is one of my favorite conversations. I just connected with Kelsey's energy so much. The way that she delivers this information is really relatable. And I know a lot of the people listening to this podcast are going to relate to her energy as well and her story. So Kelsey is a best-selling author and transformation facilitator in the personal development space, and she's helped thousands of women upgrade their lives and love themselves through the process with her books, blog, online courses, one-on-one coaching, international retreats, and her podcast. I was actually listening to one of her podcast episodes before recording this, and I can already tell it's going to be one of my favorites. Definitely going to keep it in my repertoire when I'm trying to have my alignment time on my walks. And I do want to say I apologize for some reason when this was recording the internet must have gone in and out a little bit so it kind of cuts out here and there but it doesn't take away from the message just make sure you're really tuned in and listening and you may have to back it up once or twice so you know just the things that come along with recording my podcast in different locations so if you're watching on youtube reminder that you can if you want to see this in real life see our faces talking you can go to alignment adventures podcast on youtube and watch this as well so the different things that kelsey and i talk about is we start by talking about the beauty of contrast which is something that i've been pondering so much recently as my life has had a lot of different contrasts and how that is such a gift it helps you figure out what you want in this life. She tells her story of how she got to where she's at. I do want to say there's a disclaimer of the mentioning of suicide. If that's something that can be a trigger for you, just know that that is something that she tells in her story, um, which I always appreciate people being open and honest and vulnerable about that. She talks about her kundalini awakening. If you have no idea what that is, she explains it a little bit. Very interested in that topic. And then one of her books is all about using affirmations to serve you. Now, this is such a common thing that we hear in this space, in the personal development, the spirituality space, but the way that she explains it is unlike any other way that I've heard it before, and it's so useful and applicable. Then we discuss the number one thing that is blocking your manifestations, blocking you from being the magnet to all the things that you desire and how we can work through that, and she actually guides me through the process so you can see a real-life tangible example of releasing whatever it is that is blocking your manifestations. 
And what I love about this process is it's so simple, so profound, and so powerful. And it reminds me a lot of the work that I do in internal guidance sessions. If you guys have checked out those recorded episodes, I'm actually going to have some more coming up, which I'm really excited for that. And then we have just a really powerful conversation about radical self-love and how it probably isn't what you think it is and how you can start embodying that today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this conversation. I know you guys are just going to love Kelsey and her energy. Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on Alignment Adventures. I'm incredibly excited for this interview and for this conversation. I can already tell just from the first few minutes of talk talking to you that this is going to be magical and just what people need. So thank you so much for coming on. Of course. I'm so excited and I'm always like really excited to talk about alignment because that's kind of my jam. So, <laughs> well, this is the perfect spot, divine timing, perfect co-creation right here. I love it so much. Well, we'll start with my usual too. So just tell us a little bit about, you can go shallow or deep, whatever feels resonant to you, but who is Kelsey Aida? Yeah, so I'll do a little shallow and a little deep. On the shallow, I am just a human being who really loves sunshine, and I just got a puppy, and I just got married. Well, I guess that's not really shallow. That's just fun life stuff, fun facts about me. But in my profession and in my work, I'm essentially an alignment coach, a transformation facilitator, a healer, and I help people to manifest their deepest, truest desires and to love themselves like wholeheartedly through that process. So a lot of the work that I do with my clients is like self-love work, therapeutic work, healing work, moving energy, um, you know, working through the blockages, untangling resistance so that people can get what they really want out of life and have a more graceful, harmonious, compassionate, self-loving experience where everything just flows and you're in much better alignment. So that's really what I'm about as far as my work. And I also write books. I've written over five books now. And I say over five because I've written chapters for other people's books. So I don't really know how to say that, but oh, five plus. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just really into manifesting radical self-love living your best life. And that's what I'm here to do. You're totally, totally our jam over here. I'm so excited to talk to you. I feel like I'm just going to want to talk to you all day. Like yes. just pick your brain on all the things, all things alignment. So that's a perfect lead into the next question. And I would love to hear this from your lens, from your perspective, but what does living in alignment mean to you? Hmm. That's kind of like a loaded question because there's so many different ways to live in alignment, right? It's like you can be in alignment with your values, meaning like the way you're spending your time and your energy is in alignment with what's most important to you. You could be just in the absence of resistance, which mm -hmm. would be also another form of alignment. You're just really in that good flow and your energy is really clear. Uh, for me personally, living in alignment means being super true to myself. Um, practicing self-love to the best of my ability in all moments and going for what I genuinely want because I make my desires really important to me. And I think mm -hmm. they're important for everyone, which is why I do the work that I do. So I think alignment is really like following your heart, keeping your heart open to yourself and just living your best life, whatever that looks like for you. Because alignment is not like, oh, this life path is alignment. Like, no, it's different for everybody. So it's really discovering what that is for you and then living it, expressing it and embodying it. Yes, 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 yes. To all of that, I love it. I agree. And I feel like this is maybe one of the trickier parts for people. And I'd love to hear your advice on this. Alignment looks different for everyone. It's unique to every single one of us. And it's so easy to get in that trap, especially we're just seeing each other stuff so frequently online, on our phones, through whatever. What is your advice to just like help someone find their own alignment? Like if they don't even know where to like start, I feel like a lot of people are there. What, what would be your advice on that journey of like, I don't even know what my desires are, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's a great question. When people feel really lost, I usually encourage them to look at what they don't like and what they don't want because mm. everybody knows what they don't like and what they don't want, right? 
And once you can have that clarity of like, I don't like being alone, that probably means that you want to be in partnership or in community or whatever it is. Like your unwanted things in life, the circumstances mm-hmm. that you're not about, they'll point you directly to what you actually do want in a way. So if you take the things that you don't like about your life and then you flip them to the opposite, what would it look like the opposite of that? And would that be what you want? Like play around with that question, right? If you're poor, do you want more money? Probably, you know, (laughs) if you're unhealthy, do you want to be healthy? Probably. So usually the contrast in life, so to speak, the misalignment pieces will actually point you to your alignment. Love. I have a feeling you listen to Abraham Hicks. (laughs) Oh yeah. I used to all the time. Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say that's something they talk about all the time. And I think it's just such a powerful way to look at life. Like when something negative or something that you don't like happens, I like how they word it. They say it's like data collecting and you're data collecting. You're like, okay, I do not want that. And that is just pointing you in the direction, like you said, of what you do want. Yeah. And I like that verbiage of contrast versus like a negative experience or unwanted experience because contrast is a little broader. So you can put it all in there, but also it doesn't have that negative charge. Like it's just contrast. Like we have moments of contracting and we have moments of expanding. So to me, like vibrationally, that feels like the best word to describe um, basically anything that's like negative or unwanted or, you know, a little bump in the road. (laughs) Contrast is like the best word. So I love using that word. That's such a good point because I think in the work that we do, maybe the naysayers could come in and be like, it can't be like rainbows and sunshine all the time, which I do feel like I'm that girl on Mean Girls. (laughs) That's like, I just want to live in a life full of rainbows and sunshine. I don't know if you remember her from the movie, Uh, but we have contrast and that's such a beautiful way to word it. We have contrast and do you think the purpose of that contrast, I guess, to feel unalignment or misalignment or low vibration is to just help guide us back on our path? Is it kind of like, like I we're think, veering off to yeah. like, oh, get back over here? <laughs> I think it is that because I think like the more you live in alignment, the more joy and fulfillment and satisfaction you're going to experience. So you'll know you're in alignment when you're feeling those feelings majority mm. of the time. Mm. But I also think it's just like part of the human experience that we signed up for is duality to experience everything. Like it would be so boring if we just had one emotional state all the time, or if there was never a problem to be solved or a challenge to be overcame. Mm. So I think partially it is to like give you clarity and get you back on track, but it's also just to give you a more rich experience and to give you that contrast so you can compare and have a context, right? So like I'm someone who suffered from depression. So when I feel good, I'm very grateful for feeling good because I know what it's like to feel suicidal, right? So I don't take anything for granted anymore. When I'm feeling good, I'm about it. I'm like, yes, my life is so much better than it used to be, right? And if I hadn't suffered from depression before, I wouldn't have the same richness to my happy days and my new life experience that I do without that Mm. contrast and without comparing. So it's really to give also that depth and perspective, I think, so that when the good things do happen and the blessings do come and the money comes and the lover comes and everything comes, you're just like, man, this is so good, especially because I had to wait for it or I had to work for it or I had to intend on it or I had to get into alignment for it. And I think it just makes it that much more satisfying. Mm, I feel that. Even though in the moment, it's like totally not satisfying. You're like, why? (laughs) Why is this happening to me? For sure. It's easy to get into that victim mentality too. But I've heard someone say that too. And I think you just worded it so beautifully. Like you can go, your lowest lows can also be your highest highs. Or maybe I'm wording that differently. But like Mm -hmm. as low as you can go, you can get that high as well the polarity of it so that's a beautiful way to look at it when you are in those low lows which is a great lead into something else I want to ask you just like a little bit of your journey because I find it so interesting to see how people got to where they are now and you are such a beautiful light ray of sunshine just love talking to you already so like how did you get to where you are right now and what was that journey like for you great question so to to give you the cliff notes before I dive in a little deeper, <laughs> I've basically had like two pretty intense spiritual awakenings before like now, up mm-hmm. until now, until this point, mm-hmm. maybe there's more, I don't know. But <laughs> the first one happened when I was in my late teens, early adulthood. And that's when I suffered from depression. I went on hormonal birth control, which really like effed me up emotionally. I um, 
was training my whole life to be a professional dancer. And then I got injured. So like my whole life just like was gone. Um, that obviously made me very distraught, very distressed. And also at the same time as those two things happening, I was just really lacking like emotional intelligence and intimacy with myself and other people. So like mm. I had a lot of friends. I was popular in school. I've always been very extroverted but I didn't really feel a deep connection with like myself or anyone else emotionally. And I'm very sensitive and I need that. So I was really just lacking the depth, which also just created like a hole in my soul pretty much. So it was a perfect storm. I became depressed. I was pretty much suffering through it and like stuck in it for a good three years. I want to say like 17 to 20 or 18 to 21. And towards the end of it, I just had this breaking point where I was like, okay, I've hit my pain threshold. Like I'm contemplating suicide. There has to be a way for me to enjoy my life. Like I used to be a happy person. Like what is going on? And I basically just made an ultimatum to the universe and God. And I was like, yo, what's a girl got to do to get some help around here? Like I need to learn how to feel better and I need to learn how to enjoy my life like now. So of course, once I put that intention out there, I started receiving all the right resources and a therapist and a shaman and podcasts and Abraham and whatever, all the, all the perspectives and helpful spiritual tools and knowledge and personal development stuff was really helping me to climb out of the hole. And once I got myself out of the depression, the practices and the tools and the modalities that I had used to get better, I was really like, mastering and just feeling the need to share to everyone in the world because I was like okay this depression doesn't need to last forever if I can heal myself from depression like think of Mm. what these tools could do for everybody else you know like that was pretty worst case scenario so I think these are pretty effective and I just really felt the need to share and become a teacher of like the spiritual wisdom that I gained and the emotional knowledge and all that stuff so that's when I decided to be an author But of course, like nobody knew who I was. I didn't have a blog. I didn't have an Instagram or a following. So logistically, I was just like, okay, I don't want to write a book in vain. Like I actually need people to read it in order for myself to be satisfied. So I started a blog, uh, KelseyAida.com, which still has all the articles up I've ever written. And I was writing about how to heal from your anxiety and your depression and how to climb up the emotional scale and how to heal yourself and how to raise your vibration and how to start manifesting what you want and feel better and everything that I was really like working on and mastering. And once I built a big enough to me, what I thought was like a big enough email list, I think I had like a couple of thousand people on my list at that point. I was like, okay, I'm going to write the book. There's people who actually like buy it and read it. This is great. And so I self-published my first book called Hashtag Actually I Can, The Art of Affirming Yourself to Greatness. And I really wanted it to be like an affirmation Bible based Mm. on the emotional guidance skill. So instead of just winging it and faking it till you make it, like I'm a millionaire, I'm in the best relationship ever, I live in my dream house, blah, blah, blah. And then you just feel stupid because like not true. (laughs) I really wanted to teach people how to speak their dreams into existence in an authentic and empowering way and how to play with the verbiage depending on like how you Mm. feel on that specific day about the topic that you're trying to make an affirmation on. So it was really like an affirmation guidebook and that was my first book and that was basically the first spiritual awakening. That was how it all began. And then a couple, not a couple years later, yeah, a couple years later, I think I was like 24, 25, I had like, a spontaneous kundalini awakening which Mm. i don't know how much you know about kundalini but um basically it's like this energy that sits at the base of your spine and they say that once it like rises up you can like reach your full potential and whatever whatever and it was very crazy experience uh it was kind of initiated because i went through a really horrible breakup and i was grieving a lot i was so sad i was releasing so much density from my body (laughs) that at some point like the energy just rose up. I remember feeling it in my spine. It felt like electricity, like going up and down my spine. It was so cool. It was like something I'd never felt before. And I had no idea what was happening. And I just like posed the question in my mind, like, what was that? That was super weird. And then in my head, I heard like, you had a Kundalini awakening. I was like, what the F is a Kundalini awakening? I guess I should Google it. So I like Google it. I'm like texting my shaman friend. I'm like, did I have a Kundalini awakening? He's like the most psychic person. I was like, tell me like, what's going on? I'm so confused. He was like, oh yeah, for sure. Don't worry. Like whatever, I'll help you through it, whatever. 
And so that just like unlocked a bunch of psychic gifts, mediumship. I didn't even know that I could connect with people on the other side. And that's when my life just got really weird. (laughs) And since then, (laughs) I've been just using those gifts in my work to channel messages, not just so much from loved ones and spirit teams, but mostly like to help people live their best life. Like I'm always channeling the universe and like having open dialogue, like, okay, how does this law of attraction work? Why doesn't this work? What's going on here? And I get clarity. So it's been, it's been a ride, but that's kind of like the two main times of my life that really have shaped this work and what I'm doing now. And yeah, now it's blossomed into retreats, a podcast, more books, coaching, and all the things. So cool. I have so many things I wrote down that I want to, I want to pull on. But first of all, I just feel like the way that you deliver this information is going to hit with so many people. Like, I feel like you're taking the things that could be maybe too like ethereal for people, or maybe they just don't understand. And you're delivering it in a way that like, I feel like a lot of people just walking around right now, especially generationally, are going to get. So thank you for doing that. I mean, I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. Like I resonate with everything you say and affirmations. Okay. That is something we hear all the time. And again, I feel like I keep referencing like pop culture, but it makes me think of that episode on sex in the city where she, (laughs) Charlotte goes to see someone and they're like, just say your affirmations and Carrie like goes crazy on her because that's true. Like that's the common thought is that you just say something and it makes it true. I think that's the misconception with the secret and manifestation and all of that. So what, what's your like hot tips with affirmations? I love your book too. I want to check that out because sometimes I have like affirmations I turn morning or intentions I set and some days they hit and some days they don't. So I loved your point of like switching up the verbiage depending on where you're at emotionally. So what yes. what can we do to start making those affirmations or intentions more personalized and meaningful to us? Yeah, that's such a great question. So yes, you will have a lot of fun with the book, especially because I organized it by like category of life. So like relationships, mm-hmm. health, mm-hmm. confidence, whatever. There's like a chapter for all the major stuff. And then depending on how you feel about that category on that certain day, there's a page of affirmations that help you feel a little bit less bad or a little bit better about it. Or, you know, it'll help you not jump the Grand Canyon, but Mm. really you just want to either go for a feeling of relief, openness, or excitement, right? That's what makes like a positive affirmation actually work for you. If it's not bringing you a sense of relief, if it's not making you excited, if it's not making you feel open to possibility, then that's not the affirmation for you in that moment. So if it's making you feel fraudulent, if it's making you feel like a liar, if it's making you feel stupid, that is not helpful. It's actually causing uh, like neurologically and energetically like split in your psyche. So we don't want to do that. Don't affirm things that make you feel bad about yourself. It's horrible. So instead... <laughs> I'll give an example because this will make it make a lot more sense. Let's say you want to manifest your soulmate. You're ready to meet your partner. Mm. You've been in the dating game. It's been lame and you're ready to just meet your person and stop dating. (laughs) Yes. So the traditional affirmation way would tell you to affirm, I'm in a committed, loving relationship, right? And then you're like, I wish. Yeah, right. (laughs) Not true. (laughs) So you're going to feel bad. But instead we can say, I'm ready to meet my person. I'm excited Mm -hmm. to like encounter my soulmate and learn more about them. I'm really looking forward to this loving, committed partnership that I'm calling in. I'm ready to meet my person. I um, am willing to do what it takes to be in a loving, committed relationship. So, Mm -hmm. and here's something too that I need to clarify because in the affirmation world, they always say, don't make it about the future, right? You have to affirm it like it's happening now. But this doesn't work for everyone. Like if you don't have a vivid imagination where you can set aside disbelief and be like, I am in that relationship. Like for some people, they can do that and it feels good. They just take themselves there in their mind. They, it makes them feel really open and they're like future pacing and they're there, right? They're like, I'm in it. I'm not in it, but I'm in it, you know, yeah. mentally. But for a lot of people, that's not the case. So that doesn't mean you can't do affirmations and you can still do it about future stuff, but technically it's not in the future tense. If you're saying I am ready to receive, I am open Mm. to do this. I am willing to blah, blah, blah. Those are still present tense. Those are still Mm. in the now. And you're anchoring the frequency of that desire into the now with your openness and your readiness. Mm. And 
the reason that affirmations work is not because you're doing a magic spell, although there is vibration that carries through the words and that is a small part of it, but it's more so the way the affirmation changes your energy makes Mm -hmm. you a vibrational match to the thing that you're speaking about or writing about or however you use the affirmations. So does that example make sense? And how you can change it and soften it and tweak it to make it more authentic to you in the moment. Yes. I love that wording. I'm open to receiving. I feel like open and it, this feels close to it. Curious energy yeah. is really powerful energy to be in. As like, again, we talked about like the victim mentality, like you're open to something. So many people are just closed off. And that makes me think something you hit on earlier, resistance. Resistance, resistance, resistance is so hard hard for people. I notice that now, even like just being home, like I'm home visiting before we start our next adventure. And I notice resistance come up all the time. And I feel like I'm in a spot now where I'm like, okay, I'm aware of that. But what are your tips for that? Because I think that's where a majority of suffering comes from. Would you agree? It's just like our resistance to what is or to changing what is. How do we we deal with resistance? Because that's that's a toughie. Yeah. (laughs) It's actually (laughs) such a deep and long answer that I'm working on a whole book about it, but from a law of attraction perspective. Mm -hmm. So like oftentimes if you're manifesting something, you're doing your intention setting work, you've made a vision board, you're doing your affirmations, you're working towards it, but like crickets, it's not happening. And you're like, Mm -hmm. what the heck? Where's my stuff? Where's where's the stuff that I've been creating? Why isn't my experience changing? Why is my life the same? usually you're carrying some form or another of resistance, which vibrationally closes off your energy and makes it hard for the universe to send you anything or for you to be magnetic for anything to like come to your energy field. So resistance is really, or I should say mastering your resistance is really the name of the game. Mm. And I've been using the verbiage that resistance is the enemy when it comes to manifesting, but not to actually make it into an enemy because that's just another form of resistance. And if you resist (laughs) resistance, it's just not helpful, right? But for sake of teaching, think of resistance as like the one piece that you have to overcome to manifest anything or to change anything about your life. And there's so many different ways it can show up, like how you said, right? You can be resisting the now, you can be resisting your circumstances, you can be resisting how you actually feel. A lot of people resist what they genuinely want because they think they can't get it or whatever. You know, like resistance, there's so many ways that we can practice it and do it sometimes without even knowing, right? Sometimes the resistance lives in our subconscious and we think consciously, I want that thing, I want that experience. But in the back of your mind, it's like, no, we don't want that. That would be terrible. That would be dangerous. That would ruin our lives. You know, whatever it is. So it shows up in so many forms. So I think the answer depends on like how it's showing up is kind of how you can start to work through it. But I kind of have like a one, two step generalized dance that I like to do with resistance, Mm -hmm. which is one to figure out what it is. Like, Mm -hmm. where am I carrying resistance? Where's the blockage? And if let's say you're trying to create something new, a good question you can ask yourself to kind of open up the answer to this is, is there any part of me that's not on board with what I'm saying that I want. So back to the soulmate example, if you're like, okay, I really want to manifest my person. That's the only thing I've ever wanted. I'm obsessed with love. I'm a hopeless romantic. Like that's what I want. Obviously, of course, like all parts of me want that. No, (laughs) if it hasn't happened yet, probably not all parts of you are on board. So if you ask the question and you stay open and curious, like you said, very powerful vibration to be in, you might notice that a part of you is like really traumatized from the last relationship fiasco you were in, or that you have a belief that like, it's never going to work out for you because your parents are divorced or whatever it is, you know? So if you're open to that, you can bring all those limiting beliefs. Sometimes it's limiting beliefs. Sometimes it's other stuff. You can bring the resistance to the surface, look at it, and then do what you want with it. Sometimes just looking at it is enough to be like, I don't want to believe this anymore. I don't want to think this anymore. That's dumb. That's not true. Whatever. Getting rid of it. And then it's not a problem for you. But sometimes you got to do a little more work. So once you've identified, if you can't just let it go, you have to question. You got to look at these things on paper usually is helpful or with a facilitator like myself, look at these pieces and be like, can I know for certain that this is absolutely true? 
Where is this actually coming from? Do I want to keep holding on to this or not? You know, like, what are you willing to change in order to get the life that you want? You have to be like real with yourself. So that's kind of my dance, identify and then troubleshoot. But it mm. can the, the system can look a little bit different depending on the exact piece of resistance, which is basically what I help people to do because it's kind of hard to do it by yourself. But um, in one of my books, it's called Letters to the Universe. It's a manifesting journal. Um, I created like a system of questions where you get clear about what you want and then you can kind of help to identify your resistance mm. too. There's a couple of resistance releasing questions in there. And then also in my other book called my pocket guide to manifestation there's some practices to help people release resistance in certain ways so it's kind of like a big answer which is why I have so much content to teach about it but in the short of it you have to really figure out what it is bring it to the surface bring awareness and consciousness to it and then you can deal with it from there Mm, love that answer and I I also agree like low key or not so low key I feel like awareness is like the biggest piece is just being aware of the things and back to what you said at the beginning it's different for everyone your alignment's different for everyone as well as like your healing journey and what's going to help you work through your your stuff so what would you say like and the people that you work with and the work that you do like what are the major things that really help people I like what you said at the beginning too. like come back to their truth I feel like that's all my conversations seem to lead there, like coming back to our truth. What practices would you say are really just modalities or anything are helping people come back to that truth of who they really are? Yeah. So the two biggest ones that come up for me is one, I use my intuitive gifts a lot to remind Mm. people of their truth. Mm. Cause if they hear Mm. it, they might remember because Mm. sometimes you get stuck in like your own little storm and there's a lot of emotions, you don't have clarity, but when someone's like, well, remember that, you know, or like I'll channel a message from their higher self or their soul, their spirit team or whatever. And they're like, duh, that feels so true. I feel it as truth in my whole body. Like I knew that, but I forgot, you know? So sometimes reminders are good. Um, But one of the main ways that I work with people's energy helps to really clear their emotional body so they can come back to center. Because Mm. when you have a lot of emotional movement or a lot of density or a lot of like uncomfortable feelings happening, intense sensations, it's just really distracting and you can't necessarily always reach your truth. And Mm. there's a way to use your emotions to get to your personal truth. So like, Mm. for example, let's say you're at Thanksgiving dinner with your family and it's super triggering, even though you thought you were really evolved, but like, welcome to family life. And um your uncle says something that you don't like and it like makes you mad, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe that person crossed a boundary and your anger is trying to point you to your boundary, aka your personal truth, one of your personal truths. Or your sadness that something is missing in your life is like, hey, my personal truth is I need this thing or I love this thing or I like this is why I need to be happy, right? Mm -hmm. So usually your, your emotions are coming for a message. They're like, hey, we have a personal truth for you, but the only way you can get to that personal truth is by feeling and going through, which is scary. So I help people to go through in a more non-scary, more graceful, compassionate way where they're being held by myself and also they're learning how to hold themselves at the same time. So a lot of emotional processing too, because what happens is a lot of people think, oh my gosh, if I go there, if I let myself feel jealous or mad or angry or sad or hopeless or whatever, I'm going to get stuck right? Everyone thinks they're going to get stuck in these bad feelings. But from what I've experienced with every single client that I've ever worked with and with myself, the faster and deeper you go into it, the sooner you get unstuck. (laughs) Because once you stop resisting how you're feeling, you open up your emotional body, it knows how to heal. But the problem Mm. is we don't give ourselves the time and the space. We say, I don't have time to feel sad right now. Ain't nobody got time for this. I'm not willing to be uncomfortable. I don't want to go there. I need to deal with this other thing. And so it stays inside. It doesn't go anywhere. It just waits until the moment is right for the healing. And if you don't allow those moments, like consciously, I mean, it's just going to get stuck in there. And then that's your vibrational standpoint that you're manifesting from, which people also don't think about. So (laughs) So really the emotional processing and moving energy and the emotional body once we've cleared a lot of that like debris and the energy moves on its own because we allowed for the movement 
people come back to their truth so fast and they get relief like instantaneously. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I've worked with people who have been like so depressed or so anxious and whatever. And as soon as we like make it okay to feel like that for five minutes, like three minutes in, they're like, well, I'm feeling so much better. That's crazy. I'm like, yeah, I know. (laughs) It's mind blowing. And so the paradox of it, right? Like I feel like this is a rabbit hole and I say it all the time. I can feel the people like rolling their eyes because Lindsay says this all the time, but it's crazy <laughs> that we're not taught this. Like we're not taught how to deal with our emotions. Actually, it seems like a lot of times we're taught to suppress our emotions. Yeah. So it's like relearning that. And it's just so interesting. You're right. I've experienced that too. Like when you allow yourself to feel it, it really only takes like 30 seconds to a few minutes. So yeah. what? It's what not as some... long as people think it's going to be. No, and to just truly feel it. So what does that look like? And maybe that's something you do with your clients, like to truly feel an emotion in like a healthy way. How yeah. could that look for people? Yeah, that's a great question. If you're open, I can guide you through it and we could work through some stuff on air. Or if you don't want to do that, yeah. I can just tell you the process. But I think it'd be better to like demonstrate it. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it Okay, so, so first I'll... Tell a little bit about it and then we'll demonstrate. Okay. okay. So really the work is about isolating the emotion and letting go of suspending temporarily the stories, the thoughts Mm. and everything that like led up to it and everything that's coming from it. So let's say if you're sad because something happened instead of like a lot of people think that feeling their feelings is thinking their feelings, right? Like, Mm. this is what made me sad. And then you think about it, it's making you more upset. And then you're like, this means that I'm never going to be happy and blah, blah, blah. Like, if I'm sad, that means I'm going to manifest bad stuff. And it's like, everything that happens before and after the sadness, irrelevant. Let's just isolate the present moment in your body of whatever that feeling is. Let it rise up, be with it physiologically in your body and watch what happens. So that's Mm. basically the process. And the rule is, Whenever you're processing your feelings, the golden rule is to not use your feelings against yourself or against anyone else. So it's kind of like, imagine if you have a candle with a burning flame at the top, it's just putting it in your hand and just looking at it Mm -hmm. rather than pointing it at yourself and setting yourself on fire, (laughs) pointing it at someone else and taking it out on them. You're just with it and you're not using it against anyone or anything. Make sense? Yes, which so many people do. What do we do? Like uh, deflect or like point at other people, like go off on other people. So yeah, and like that's what happens when we don't take the time to deal with them consciously. They're going Mm -hmm. to come out in like not so great ways. (laughs) 100%. They need to be expressed one way or another, basically. So you can either express them on purpose in like a controlled, peaceful setting (laughs) or you can express them when you least expect it and you've gone over the edge and you're yelling at your boss or yelling at your kids or you're crying at work or whatever inappropriate time where it's like not ideal. So that's a lot of the work that I do. But yeah, if you want, we can we can do it right now. Oh, I love it so much. Okay. I'm really excited. Cool. She's here. Thank for you. It. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to have you just close your eyes and first just take a couple nice deep cleansing breaths just so you can land in the moment and tune into your body. Just a couple nice nourishing breaths here to slow everything down. And now, as you still just breathe nice and slow, without any restraint or not efforting too hard, we're just breathing, encouraging the breath. I want you to just feel into your emotional body and just set the intention to like hold space for whatever's here right now, whether it's good, bad, ugly, uncomfortable, or happy, whatever it is, just letting that emotion know that like it's safe to exist in your body. Now, as you breathe and as you start to tune into any emotions that are happening today or right now, I just want you to let it kind of rise up in your system. Like imagine it's bubbling up and let it just come to the surface and notice physiologically where you feel sensations in your body and feel free to describe to me what you're noticing. Mm. 
So when you first said it, definitely judgment. Judgment came up, just the word to me. Yeah. The feeling. And it it feels almost like lava. Yeah. <laughs> coming up from like my chest into my throat. Okay. Perfect. Great description. Mm -hmm. So as you breathe, I want you to literally just be with this lava. Just let it exist. We're not going to place judgment on the judgment, right? This is a natural human experience. And if we didn't make it mean anything bad about ourselves or our life, what would just be left? Probably just the judgment itself. So let's just be with that. And as you're breathing and noticing this lava, feeling it, feeling the intensity in your body, what's like the number of intensity you would say you're experiencing? 10 being like the most intense. I'd say like a four or five. Okay, perfect. So it's like a medium, medium judgment five. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So just breathing with it and staying with it for as long as you can. And we're not thinking about it or analyzing it or trying to make it go away. We're just literally being with this sensation and breathing, sending love and oxygen to any areas of discomfort. And we'll just get curious and see what happens next. Noticing that your body's moving, loosening up. Doing really good. Looking more clear, more calm. What are you noticing as you breathe with this? Yeah, just almost like <clears throat> I need to clear it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Whatever movements feel intuitive or whatever helps you to feel like you can encourage the energy to move, just go ahead and do that as you breathe. Noticing if the energy moves or changes or shifts in any way. Yeah, it's funny because like my mind wants to tell a story of why I feel judgment yeah <laughs> like it wants to tell you like natural I'm judging this or whatever but it's like already just acknowledging that feeling I feel like tingles there now like it yeah. feels lighter <laughs> yeah yeah it feels lighter so what like number would you say you're at now oh I would say like zero Oh, wow. Okay. So it's like four or five, like medium judgment to like a zero. It's process. Yeah. process. Feeling better. Okay, cool. So take a couple more, just nice cleansing okay. breaths and just taking this relief. And as you breathe, you can imagine you're breathing in like a white light, a cleansing energy to just help cleanse out any other emotional debris that's in there. And just notice like how quickly you started to feel better once we moved towards the discomfort or really just were present with what was. Whenever you're ready, you can take your last deep breath and open your eyes. Doing really good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I noticed you're like touching your heart here and there. And I was like, she feeling it. She feeling it. <laughs> and it's, it's funny too, because like, again, my mind wants to come in and make it more complicated or complex, right. you know, but as soon as I felt it and it really did, like, I can imagine when you have, heartburn, but it wasn't heartburn feeling like just this feeling going up and down. And as soon as I just like sat with it and like you said, I couldn't even think of a mind story. Like I couldn't even come up with the mind story of why I'm feeling judgment, which is really resonant. I thought I was going to say like busy because it's just a chaotic time right now. But being home, I think I say home where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Being in your hometown, you nailed it on the head. Like Thanksgiving with your uncle. So much <laughs> can come up. So much. Judgment of other people, judgment of yourself, judgment of your past self. And that just, that was really exactly what I needed in this moment. It was just to allow myself to feel that, that lava that is still there and it doesn't, 
It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. So like in your experiences, like with people, are, is it more intense sometimes or is it more like what happens sometimes, here? Sometimes because emotions kind of work like a wave. So especially if someone's been like denying or suppressing something for a long time, when you release the pressure of that, it can be intense and tears can happen and, you know, other things can happen. But for the most part, the wave of intensity passes very quickly once people surrender to the experience and they're really like meditating on how the emotion feels in their body, which is why you don't have the mental capacity to like make the stories and think about why it's happening and all that stuff. And if I notice they're doing that, I just keep bringing their attention back to the sensation, the sensation, the sensation, because when you isolate it to a sensation in the body, it's much more manageable and less overwhelming, even if it is uncomfortable, than like, thinking about the feeling and feeling the feeling and processing the feeling and making stories about the feeling and like exacerbating the feeling and resisting it and panicking about the feeling like that's very different and that's what most people think processing their feelings is but Mm -hmm. it's literally just noticing it and giving yourself unconditional presence so I will be with myself no matter how uncomfortable I'm feeling, no matter if I want to or not, no matter if it's like desirable or not, like I'm giving myself the gift of my own unconditional presence because that's all your emotions need to move so that you can naturally come back up to a higher vibrational state. Mm. The best gift you can give yourself is presence. I love that. The presence of the present and uh, so many like hits for downloads and pings right then because we like you said you feel the sadness or the judgment or the anger or whatever come up and we're like I just don't have time for this like that's my story too I'm just too busy which I'm like it's such a story but just giving yourself presence to be that emotion and whether it's like taking time like this is something someone can do I mean I think it's always more powerful to do with someone like they're help me feel safe to go and feel that but then you can also go and just do it throughout your day-to-day and like move through things faster and not have to carry it around such a beautiful beautiful gift yeah and if people want um I can send you the link I believe I made a guided meditation of me guiding people through the process and it's only like five dollars you can download it right onto your computer and you can use it all you want so if you don't have the resources or don't feel called to work with a coach like in an intense way just download the meditation it's a really good resource and that way you can learn and then once you get really comfortable doing it you can do it by yourself more easily Mm -hmm. but I also wrote about that practice in um another book that I just recently self-published called the mini book because it's only 40 pages of self-love for the modern woman and like it's basically mm-hmm. a self-love guide and that's one of the main practices I teach in there because it's one of the most self-loving things you can do is be with yourself no matter what be with yourself unconditionally and what happens to my clients because we practice this a lot they get really good at it it gives them so much confidence and they feel so resilient because they know I can literally handle any emotion that happens within me because of whatever happens in my life. And therefore I'm not afraid of anything. And therefore I'm free to literally go in the direction that best serves me and feels the best to me without my fear being like, well, what if I get disappointed? Or what if I get heartbroken? Or what if this, or what if that? They're just like, well, what if that's fine, I'll process it, I can handle anything. Like if I get disappointed, I'll be disappointed and I'll move on with my life. Like, so it really gives people this freedom that I feel like really can't be accessed any other way other than just like knowing how to feel it all. Mm, Wow, that's, that's powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. I can feel that. You're right, because what what is stopping us from doing things we want to do, the things we love, the things we dream about, finding our alignment, the fear of what we'll feel if we go and do those things. Exactly. It's not even the fear of the outcome so much. It's the fear of the feeling that you you might feel if the outcome doesn't go your way, right? So if you're not scared of your feelings, then you ain't scared of nothing. (laughs) You can literally live your best life in a I wouldn't say fearless because I don't think any person on the planet is like a thousand percent fearless, but in a much less fearful way, you can be very confident and go in any direction that is like calling you. Such a beautiful, beautiful way to live. And this is a perfect lead in because that was the last thing I wanted to ask you. Well, I have a few more questions. Well, I'll respect your time. But one thing I really wanted to ask you, because that's something you 
is a big part of your work is self-love. Mm-hmm. So this is a huge part of self-love. It's just learning how to process our emotions. Is there anything else you want to say on that? Because I know that is a big part of your work is practicing radical self-love. Yeah, to me, radical self-love is not, here's the thing. Here's what it's not. A lot of people think that self-love is liking everything about yourself. And it doesn't have to be that. Like, yes, people who are more self-loving usually like and appreciate and admire and are grateful for more of their qualities. But everybody has things that they don't like about themselves. I have things that I don't like about myself. Like, I tend to lean on an anxious spectrum. Do I like that? No, it's annoying, right? But I can still love my anxiety because I understand why she's there. I've literally Mm -hmm. talked to the consciousness of my anxiety. And she told me, hey, I'm only here as the pre-worry so that you don't have to worry in real life. I just speculate all these things that could happen so that they don't happen so that you have a great life. And once I realized that she had pure positive intentions behind the anxiety that I don't like, you can have appreciation for that. So a lot of the work that I do around self-love is like, hearts work so everyone basically has like a psyche that has lots of different personalities not just people with multiple personality disorder right that's a very extreme case but everybody has multiple personalities right you have a part of you that's like more nerdy a part of you that's more social a part of you that's this a part of you that's that and so we all have that we can relate to that right so I work a lot on helping people to accept, love, extend, uh, understand, and embrace all their parts so that they can love themselves wholly and fully. Because if you say, oh, I love the part of me that's a perfectionist, but I hate the part of me that has anxiety. I mean, you're just in a, a, a internal warfare. Like I, you yeah. can't hate certain parts of you and have inner peace. That's just yeah. not simpatico. That doesn't work out, right? Yeah. So It's really about creating that internal peace through compassion, understanding, curiosity, openness. And I help people to really understand themselves. And in doing that, it's much easier to love and appreciate. Don't have to like everything, but there is a way where you can come to love everything because no part of you can be against yourself. It's actually like physiologically impossible. Even self-sabotage is just like misguided self-love, right? Like if a part of you is always sabotaging your relationships, Maybe that's the part that's scared because of last time, right? So it's trying to protect yeah. you. It doesn't want you to get heartbroken, right? That's a loving thing. That's something you would do for someone that you love, right? So it all comes back to a lot of parts work, a lot of emotional work, and a lot of just learning to appreciate, be with, honor, and embody like your true self. And something mm-hmm. that really sets people apart who love themselves from people who don't is that people who love themselves make their needs, their values, their desires, and their boundaries important to them. They're Mm -hmm. taking positive ownership of themselves, what they need, what they want, what they like, what they don't like. And it's the same way that I love my dog, who's also super annoying. Sometimes he's a puppy. He literally pees over my house every five minutes. I don't love that, right? But I love my dog because he's the cutest thing ever. And he's just an innocent (laughs) little puppy. He doesn't know better, right? And me loving my dog is not loving everything about him or that comes with that, but it's me taking positive ownership of the dog, right? The Mm. dog's well-being is my well-being. If I love something or someone, I'm taking them in as a part of myself. So Mm. to love yourself is to like reclaim yourself and take positive ownership of yourself and your needs and your well-being and your wishes and your desires and what matters to you. And ultimately, especially your feelings. So people who love themselves really care about feeling good and ultimately want to feel good as much as they possibly can, which is why they work with me to do this type of work. So they can't, you know? Yeah. So it all kind of comes full circle because the manifesting and the self-love, it's all like the self-love leads to effortless manifestation because the self-love creates more internal harmony and resonance and vibration. And from there, manifestation gets much easier. So good. Love, love, love. So many things that I want to say. Sometimes it's hard for my brain to like, it's a lot. And I'm like, (laughs) they're here, there, and everywhere. But you're right. It all connects. And I feel like that's a part of this journey. We're here. And it takes me back to you talking about your story we're constantly learning about ourselves. Like we're constantly learning new facets of ourselves, new 
parts of ourselves that we have to love and accept and be compassionate for. And that's why I feel like I hate to call it work because that doesn't sound as appealing, but like the work's yeah. never done or like the, the journey's never done. There's no right. destination. There's nowhere to go because we're always like uncovering new parts of ourselves and accepting them and bringing them in. And just, it's so interesting to me how this, this journey is just wild. It's a wild journey. So thank goodness we have wild. people like you to guide us through it. I know so many people are listening and they're like, yes, yes, yes. I love Kelsey, love her energy, want to work with her. What are some ways that they can connect with you and do do yes. this stuff? Yes, I have literally so many resources, free or paid or podcast or blog articles or working with me. So if you just go to KelseyAida.com, that's where you'll find everything. I do have, I'm feeling called to share this for whoever's listening. Mm -hmm. I have an online course called Radical Self-Love. That's like a self-paced video tutorials of me guiding you through stuff. That is such an underutilized resource by people. So I just wanted to point some people in that direction. If you're really resonating with some of the work I've been showing here and maybe you aren't feeling ready to like deep dive into working one-on-one, -on -one, but the course is like amazing. So Radical Self-Love, there's a book I wrote. 40 pages, easy read, $9.99, can't go wrong. Um, yes. But you can literally find everything at KelseyAida.com. And then if you like hearing my voice and you get good downloads and insights that way, I have a podcast that I co-host with my friend who's a hypnotherapist and it's called High Vibe In It. And we're all about everything that I just talked about. So living your best life. We have guests on a lot. Um, sometimes we do solo episodes and we're just helping everyone manifest their dreams love themselves through the process over there. And what else is a good resource? I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Kelsey Aida. I'm on all social as Kelsey Aida. And I post a lot of good stuff on my social. So definitely check that out. And yeah, podcast, social, website, courses, books. It's all on the website. So I love it. Love it all. I am going to be listening to High Vibe in It. I love that you do it with your friend. I think that's yeah, such a it's so fun funny because she actually like interviewed me for this summit before we knew each other. And we just like couldn't stop talking. We just kept talking, 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 <laughs> talking. We're like instant soulmate friends. And then she had the opportunity to do this podcast. And she was like, I really want to have my own podcast. Let's see if Kelsey wants to do it with me. And I was like, here's my podcast that I've been manifesting. It was like such a fun story. But yeah, high vibe in it. It's a good time over there. And if anyone does want to do this work one-on-one, -on -one, I actually have a couple new coaching spots that just opened up because I had a couple students graduate my program. So KelseyAida.com slash coaching, you'll find all that intel. And yeah, I would just encourage people to utilize me as a resource because I'm here for it and I'm excited yeah. about it and I'm really good at it. So yes, I'll anyone <laughs> listening, yes, anyone listening that's like getting that ping, that feeling in their body, that resonance, the chills, the tingles, whatever follow that honor it I love it and it sounds like you incorporate like your new you're gonna have to come back on because I want to ask you yeah, about the kundalini. part two part three oh. let's do it yes the kundalini awakening it sounds like you're using those skills in your work as well like your psychic abilities mediumship that that's included in these things right because I'm super fascinated by that yeah and I'm actually about to get my Akashic Records certification so I can read the Akashic Records for people too so love I'm it. excited about that yeah yes such a, such a wide portfolio, beautiful resource. Okay. These last two questions I love just because they're really fun. Yeah. What's one of your current favorite, I call them alignment activities, but something you just love to do time and space disappear. You could just, you go to another dimension when you do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, normally I would have said like meditating in the sauna because I have some super intense like sauna meditations, but now I don't have access to the sauna because I joined this other gym waiting for them to put a sauna. So <laughs> now it's probably like snuggling with my dog when asterisk when he's tired and wants to snuggle, not when he's being crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's your puppy's name? Otto. He's only oh. 15 weeks and like four pounds. He's a <gasps> wiener dog. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love wiener dog. Yeah. He's the cutest. That's why I love this question because it always comes back to like simple things that we oh, just yeah. love doing. And I think sometimes we just get, I know I do get caught up in the mundane bu busyness and forget to do the, the things that make me truly happy. So I, I just love hearing people's answers. And then last one, if you had to give just one piece of advice to anyone listening on this path, on this journey, what would it be? 
Oh my gosh, just one. I know it's so <laughs> I hard. I feel like all I have is advice to give. Um, okay, let me channel this from the depths of my soul. Yeah, yeah. Let's see oh. what we got here. Mm, mm. Okay, I would have to say give yourself the gift of going for and following your dreams because your dreams did not get planted in your heart for nothing. If you have a dream, it's there for a reason. So no matter how hard or uncomfortable or scary, my advice would be to find a way to do it and experience it. I love that. I feel that. I feel that so much. Like if you have the idea to do something, it's not random. Someone else need you to go do that thing and I think and that's speaking a of alignment thing that at. is your alignment like your desires are pointing you on your path like everyone has yes. their own unique life path and you can find out what it is by figuring out what you want exactly. <laughs> if you have a vision or you know a pull like follow it that is your alignment that's trying to get you on your path one thousand percent Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on. I feel like I could just talk to you for hours, but yes, I'm going to respect you. we'll your have time. We'll do another part later. Yes, yes, yes. I loved your energy. So much wisdom, so much magic. Thank you so much for coming on. And yes, we'll see you hopefully next time on Alignment of Adventures. <laughs> Kelsey, again, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It is so interesting listening to this in hindsight. So obviously I recorded this before our RV adventure and the things that happened, man, she was like talking directly to me at the end with her message about go and follow your dreams, even if they're scary, even if they don't turn out like you thought they would, you're meant to do them for a reason. So I hope that's a reminder to you, whatever's on your heart, whatever you're desiring to do, go and do it. Even if it doesn't turn out anything like you imagined, you're going to get exactly what you need from it. And the world's going to get what it needs from you pursuing your dreams. Now I will link all of Kelsey's information in the show notes or in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, go and check out her website, KelseyAida.com and that's Kelsey K-E-L-S-E-Y-A-I-D-A.com. I will also link that meditation that she sent me where you can practice releasing your own resistance, which is such a powerful practice. If we did that even just like once a week, or imagine if we did that daily, again, it's so simple, but just will have profound effects on your life. I love the way that she described that practice. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. We have new episodes every week. We're back into the every week groove now that Lindsay's life has calmed down just a little bit. Um, and it's either interviews like today's beautiful interview or solo episodes with myself. But we're always diving into what it means to live an aligning, present, and fulfilling life. If you want to follow along with me on Instagram, that's where I give like the most real-time updates and share my tidbits and my messages for my internal guidance, my intuition. You can follow along at Lindsay with an A, M as a Michelle Tanner. And I'm just sending you all so much love, all the highest vibes. And of course, I will see you in next week's episode of Alignment Adventures.